internet friends. Welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Hey, Internet friends, Magic Brad here, Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative. And I've got another friend online. Let me grab her book here. She's an author, and her name is Maria, and I believe the last name is pronounced Sutro. Am I correct? You are correct. It is Marie yeah. Sutro. That, that on, says right on the cover. See? So, Marie, I'm up here in Minneapolis where it's, it hasn't really snowed much yet, which is really weird because usually we get it by Oct in October, but it's December 1st and we don't have snow on the ground. It's kind of weird. And you're in Northern California. You guys get snow there, right? Uh, we get snow in the higher elevations. I'm kind of in the foothills right now, so we don't really see as much, but every once in a while there's a little carpet white outside. Okay. Well, I don't do these uh, videos too long. This is just a get to know, like, and trust who you are and find out more about you. So you married, you got kids, you got a pet fish. What do you, who, who are you? <laughs> well, you already know I live in Northern California. You know I'm a writer. You know I've got that new book coming out January 10th, actually, Dark Associations. Uh, I have been married for quite a while. Next year it'll be 20 years. Wow. And yeah, and I like to say that I live with a herd of cats because I have three, and at that point it becomes a herd. <laughs> Absolutely, I suppose that. Do, do they all come running after you when you feed stuff? Oh, oh yes. Yes, and there is a cacophony of sounds. I had a friend that uh, she was, did an animal rescue thing over in Thailand, and it was so funny in the morning. There's cats, 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 meow, meow, those tails sticking up. Meow. Anyways, oh, <laughs> so we got to what you do. You were, you were an author, writer, and you. My, my wife would love you. She reads books a lot. She's. It's kind of funny when we go to bookstores and she, you know, purges her books and gets rid of the old ones. She actually gets emotional and starts crying and she can't leave without buying some new books. So she loves books and I'll let her read this. I'm not a big reader myself. I'm more of a promoter. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? It sounds like your wife is a gal after my own heart. I do sometimes <laughs> have certain separation anxieties with certain books and there are those that have just stayed with me throughout decades, certain ones that I just can't bear to part with. Uh, so I definitely can appreciate where your wife's coming from. So is this your first book, or have you written others? Uh, that is my debut novel. There's uh, some other work on the shelf, but this is the first one that, that's being published. That's and so good, and this is a thick one, too. There's a lot of stuff here. It <laughs> is. I, uh, I definitely took the time to make sure it's going to be a fun, fun adventure for people. So when you do your work, do you, like when you do your writing, where do you do it? Do you have like a studio like you're in now or do you go to a coffee shop or do you get inspired by going and locking yourself up in a hotel room somewhere and write or where, where do you do your work? Well, I can write anywhere, literally. It can be the loudest place in the world or it can be the oddest place in the world. Uh, so it, it can happen anywhere. But my preference is when I'm at home, I actually, even though I've got a great office setup. I sneak out to where the dining room table is and I sit at the corner and I open the patio slider and we've got a little creek running outside, listen nice. to the sound of nature. Sometimes there's deer out there, or other forest friends, and that's what inspires me. Yeah, my wife is, she likes to journal, so she sits out here and stares out into the marsh area with her little fancy pens. She pays like $100 for pen. I don't understand that. Uh, I think it's part of that whole writing and reading world. It is. Where you it's crazy. Love all of those little details. My brain just doesn't function that way. For me, it's like, just give me a big pen that writes. Okay, that's good enough. But uh, she tr tries them all out and see how they glide. I suppose you got to have that too. You got to get that feeling, and that flow and stuff. Oh, yes. And many people don't understand that. You know, as my husband's a big proponent of the big pen. But to me, the big pens are just uh, a struggle in and of themselves. <laughs> I got this little card that came with the book that you sent me too with the little handwritten thing on there. You're so sweet. <laughs> so I'm always curious to, to find out people and, and when they work. When, when's your peak hour? Are you like a morning person? You get up and do your work? Or are you like uh, burning the midnight oil kind of person? Uh, again, it'll vary for whatever I can do, whatever inspiration allows or when it hits. But in general, I'm kind of the 
late morning to afternoon person. I like to get my day in order so that I feel like I can just focus and put my brain where it needs to be and get in gear. So once I get the cats in order, <laughs> bring some peace to the valley, then I can move on and just settle into the writing. So how did you come up with this title, Dark Associations? What, what is this one all about? What, what inspired it? Well, the, the book actually, it's kind of an interesting story. Uh, when I was a little girl, my father uh, had been a police officer. He was, he had since moved on out of it, but he had all of these great and amazing stories of when he had been a San Francisco police officer and he had worked undercover. And I would hear these stories growing up. And I also was a huge reader growing up and I was in love with mysteries. And I don't know if you remember the kids series Encyclopedia Brown or Nancy Drew Hardy Boys, any sure. of those. And uh, so those, those two factors kind of came together and, and there was a history in the SFPD. Not only had my father been uh, a member of the SFPD, but my grandfather and my great grandfather had, had all served. Oh. So there was kind of this tradition and, you know, I grew up in the Bay area, spent a lot of time. San Francisco is my favorite city in the world. And so it was just kind of a natural merging and evolution. Wow. So I'm, again, I'm not a reader or a writer. I, when I do my internet stuff, I use that voice activation stuff. So I don't have to type stuff. So, so it was kind of fascinating to see people that they're so driven with this kind of thing. Do you, do you want to share with us how we get a hold of you or how we, I'm assuming the book is on Amazon. Is that true? It is. Of course. It is available for pre-order on Amazon right now. And anyone who wants to take a peek at it or learn about me or what I'm doing can also go to my website, which is mariesutro.com. Uh, there it is. <laughs> That's how you spell and it. <laughs> it is available for pre-order and it will be released on January 10th. Well, I read a little bit of it, but we don't want to give any secrets away because it's kind of a mystery thing. But um, we'll do a little teaser here because this has something to do with like state borders and stuff, doesn't it? <laughs> Not certain... too much necessarily. In the back, I read some stuff on there that it's kind of important where things happen and how borders. You know, Trump wants to put a wall between Mexico and the United States. Have you heard that? I have heard of that. Yes, I have. <laughs> I, you know, people. there's a lot of things we hear lately. <laughs> All these borders and stuff. So yeah. I want to ask my favorite, favorite question, and you kind of alluded to it, but as far as like the, the big why question, why are you doing this? But you, you kind of said because your grand, great-grandfather, grandfather, and father were in the, the law enforcement. But why did you choose writing? Why aren't you like a school teacher or a librarian? Or why don't you, why did you pick this to do for a, career or occupation? It's a very good question. And it's really, uh, it comes down to passion. I love stories. As I said, I was a, a, in love with the mystery stories as a kid, and I would read anything I could get my hands on. And for me, being able to step out into kind of the world of magic, and go into a different world and live a different existence in a very different way than when you watch a movie or kind of any of those other passive forms of entertainment. Uh, it was just literally the, the doorway to another world for me. And I thought growing up, I'd finish a book and close it and I'd sit there and think, wow, who is this author? How did they do this? How did they create this world that I just lived in for all intents and purposes for how many hours of my life? And I always thought, wow, if I could do that for other people, get them out of whatever might be irritating in their life or a struggle in their life and just give them this mini vacation, this mini mm -hmm. separation from things that that would just be one of the greatest things to me. So here I am. You know, it's interesting. I, I mentioned this on most of the interviews I do because it's true that I'd say 99.99999% of the people that I interview when I ask them the why question, it's to do to help other people. So here you are again, you're looking to inspire other people and let them get away from the craziness and get into wonderland for a little bit it's very cool i like it i commend you <laughs> thank you so i'm going to sign this one off and then what i do is i take it and i record it and put an intro and an outro on it and i beam it up to youtube and then propagate it out to blogs and social media and stuff so i'm going to get work on that right now and we'll get it up to the intro what do they call them they call them interwebs now i'll get it up to the interwebs <laughs> <laughs> we've got to stay on top of it all <laughs> <laughs> So I appreciate you being on Synergy Cafe today, and perhaps if you got another book or a book launch or something, we'll uh, do it again. So, Great. Thank you so much, Brad. Thank you. Bye.